Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing my review of this Freedom Build from Palmetto State Armory. Now this thing is not currently configured the way it would come to you out of the box or after you assemble it from the kit. However, uh, it did start life as your basic Freedom Build. Um, I'm going to be breaking down kind of my thoughts on it, how it's holding up, what I've done to it. However, if you want to see kind of the slow progression of upgrades or improvements to this, uh, I have a series called the Broke to Bougie series, where I kind of take this thing from a really, really basic out of the box $500 setup to something that could be very easily used as a fighting rifle. Uh, so um, what I want to go ahead and do is kind of lay out why I decided to do this test. If you've been following my channel, if you've seen the other AR-15 reviews that I've done, you'll know that typically, I think like the minimum price on a AR-15 that I've done a review on is like at least a thousand dollars, if not quite a bit more than that. Um, so why am I testing out a more cheap and to some people lower quality AR-15? And basically it all stems back to when um, PSA put out their tyranny lowers. So after our lovely president said that you would need um, nukes and F-15s to fight off the government as a civilian population, um, PSA responded by making their tyranny lower with an F-15 dropping nukes on it. And as someone who was an F-15 crew chief in the Air Force, you put an F-15 on something, I'm gonna buy it. So I went ahead and picked up one of their tyranny lowers and without really knowing what my plans were for it. And basically when it came in, I was thinking, what is the best way to embody an anti-tyranny AR-15 um, while staying within the current bounds of the lie, no third pinhole and everything like that. And, you know, um, while I was trying to think of that, we had situations where people were coming into the store. I, I work at a gun store here in Eugene, Oregon, and um, we'd have people who, you know, had their heart in the right place. They wanted to be able to protect themselves and their family, but they legitimately didn't have the money to buy something like a Glock or a Smith & Wesson or the brands people would typically recommend as a good starting place for people like that. Um, and all they could afford were things like High Point, Taurus pistols and all that. And, Obviously, I'm never excited to sell someone one of those pistols. However, the reality is people in those types of situations are honestly more likely to have to use it to defend themselves, and it's better they have something than nothing. And again, at least their heart and their minds are in the right place. And I was thinking about it, and I, I want to make it clear, I'm not trying to compare PSA to High Point or Taurus. I, I think they are quite a bit of step above that. Um, but really, I think one of the best ways of fighting tyranny is lowering the barrier to entry for civilian firearms ownership. And I think that's something that Palmetto State Armory has done exceptionally well. So I decided I would basically build a AR-15 using the cheapest possible kit from Palmetto State Armory. I already had the lower. So I actually got a hold of Palmetto State Armory. Uh, I've done some work with them in the past. And so in the interest of full disclosure, while I paid for the lower receiver, paid full retail price for that, I did not pay for the Freedom kit that went around it. And what it was was a basic 16 inch carbine length GI style um, blemished <laughs> Freedom kit, uh, which would have been $350. So that would be lower a rear sight so that I could actually aim the thing and a sling that put me at $500 right out the gate. So this started life as a really basic $500 rifle. And I did a bunch of shooting with it in that configuration. I think it was about just over 500 rounds that we fired it like that all in the course of a day, trying to get this thing hot, trying to test it under a realistic, you know, series of tests and applications just to see how you can realistically expect one of these to hold up. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in that first video that was kind of controversial to some people is that when I first got this thing in, I completely, so and I should say the Freedom Kit came with the upper receiver completely assembled and then the lower parts kit so you could finish out your lower receiver that you would already have. So, I completely disassembled the upper receiver and then put it back together myself just to make sure I eliminated any potential source of issues um, from you know, how it was built or anything like that so that this thing had no excuse to not perform well. And some people didn't like that I did that. They said that I gave it an unfair advantage by doing that You know, as someone who's taking an armor's course, knowing what to look for, knowing how the things are supposed to get put together. They said that was an unfair test. 
I understand where they're coming from, but my perspective was I wanted to see how the, the basically the parts quality of the parts being used by Palmetto State Armory to put one of these things together and see how it can actually hold up to use. Um, you know, is it going to have parts breakages right out of the gate because they are using substandard parts? And I didn't want a Friday afternoon build or a Monday morning build uh, from someone in South Carolina to be the cause of the issues. Again, I wanted to set this thing up for success and see what the parts quality is. Now, obviously, most people who are gonna be buying these Freedom Kits aren't necessarily gonna know what to look for if they were to take it apart and put it back together. But again, uh, th that that's what my logic was behind it and that's why I chose to do that. You can disagree with me, totally get it, totally understand where you're coming from, but at least hopefully you can understand my thought process there. So anyway, did some 500 rounds of shooting with this thing. Held up exceptionally well. I even shot steel cased right out of the gate after getting it roughly zeroed. No hiccups, no issues whatsoever of any kind, other than minor things like I could tell the gun was pretty seriously overgassed, which I expected with a carbine length system. Um, but again, no actual malfunctions of any type. So decided to invest $200 into it. Basically the idea being, okay, so you start you, you know, again, hurts in the right place. You want an AR-15 that's going to work for you, let you do what you want to do. You have $500, you get into a base gun. Where do you go from there? So with the idea that, okay, now it's time for you to invest $200 into it. Then we put a light on the front here. And in so doing, change the handguard to a Magpul handguard to be able to get that on there. And then uh, with that, uh, that, that was done. That was the $200, basically your handguard. So having to swap your sling setup and getting your light put us at $200. And some people said, should have started with a red dot. My, again, logic being with iron sights, I already have a way of aiming it in, you know, daylight. Um, however, especially right now, fall, winter, early spring, we are in times where there is more night than day. So I wanted a way to be able to illuminate my target and be able to adequately get a sight picture, uh, get sight uh, uh, target identification, positive identification, and a light is gonna allow you to do that. So we have the uh, Streamlight Protac HLX, which is a thousand lumen light, and we are running it with a tape switch. And that has been working well for us, as you'll see in some of the nighttime shooting footage with this thing. But then we decided we wanted to upgrade it a little bit more, sink another $200 into it. And with that, we've added a hollow sun red dot and then up to the buffer weight to an H2 buffer. And really at that point, things were pretty much done. Uh, we got this thing up to 1,330 rounds in that configuration. Again, zero malfunctions during that period of time. And the gun was running much, much smoother, really. Most of the recoil issues that people want to, you know, use muzzle brakes to fix, if you properly gas the gun, will get you pretty much the same effect to the point where if you look at the footage from this thing in its first iteration to where it was, you know, at this point in time, uh, the recoil is noticeably different just because that gas is tuned properly now with that heavier buffer. But again, got this thing up to 1,330 rounds, so well over a thousand rounds, and really, that's more rounds than most people are going to be putting through their AR-15 in their entire lifetime. But again, we wanted to just run the round count up on this, see again how the parts are holding up, see the durability of it, and see whether or not Palmetto State Armory ARs are something you can realistically trust your life to. So at that point, um, I decided, uh, even though again, it could have done just fine with the standard A2 pistol grip, the M4 stock and all that, um, after running it with a plate carrier, I was just running into hang up issues with the stock and all that. So I decided to do mostly ergonomic upgrades now that all of the core essentials were done. So we put a BCM gunfighter stock back here, Magpul MOE plus pistol grip, with that little bit of rubbery tackiness is just my preference. I did a Radian Talon ambidextrous safety and then a trigger guard under here just for wearing gloves, which is happening a lot right now during winter. Um, and with all of the upgrades that we have into this thing, we are looking probably sitting just under a thousand bucks for a configuration as you see here. Now, one of my goals with the upgrades of this is I didn't want to do redundant upgrades. So like, well, yeah, the mil spec trigger is functional, it's not great, but I didn't want to add, you know, a cheaper trigger just to know that I want to upgrade it again. I didn't want to, you know, do like a special light setup on the front sight post if I know I'm going to change my handguard just because again, we're talking redundant upgrades. But again, we have what I would consider to be a perfectly sufficient fighting rifle, as long as you're not running night vision, but that's a topic for another video. Um, 
and all for under a thousand dollars. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, if you spend a thousand dollars, why not spend a thousand dollars on a nicer rifle and just have all those components right there out of the gate? Again, totally valid comment. However, again, the reality is a lot of people don't have a thousand dollars to sink into something all at one time. And you might say, well, tell them to save up the money and that, yeah, sure, that's fine. However, for some people, they recognize that they might need something a little bit quicker and maybe all again they have to all they can afford is five hundred dollars to get something for home defense to protect their family to protect their loved ones and a thousand dollars is just too much to ask for right out the gate however it is something they can then upgrade over time and again a thousand dollars for a rifle with a light with an optic with it nicely ergonomically set up at least for me um that's a much more attainable goal and again something they can space out over time as funds become available than sinking a thousand dollars right out the gate without necessarily having a light without having an optic or anything like that so i think this is a very realistic approach for most people out there especially myself when i was first getting into ar-15s as a full-time college student i didn't have a thousand dollars to sink into a gun all at once uh and so uh, this is kind of the same approach I did with the Smith & Wesson M&P 15, you know, back 10 years or so ago now. So, again, different people have different circumstances and we have to address things accordingly. Now, in its current configuration, we are now over 1,500 rounds. According to my calculations, we're at 1,540 rounds. And um, we have now officially had our first malfunction. Uh, and unfortunately, as you would expect, uh, the time that I had the malfunction, it was already really, really dark outside. So I couldn't get a very clear view of what was happening. Um, from my perception, it almost looked like a double feed because the round in the magazine was barely getting pushed out of the uh, out of the magazine. So the bolt hadn't gone really forward at all. Uh, so it almost looks like the round is hitting into a case in front of it. However, after watching the footage back, what I think it was, was the round just kind of went up into the feed lips and got stuck, or into the feed ramp, excuse me, and got stuck. Uh, because when, if you watch the footage as I strip the magazine out, that round falls out, and that'll typically happen if the round is a little bit out of the mag. As you pull it out, it gets dislodged from the magazine and it falls. And I think, again, the cause for that, I was shooting some reloaded soft point ammunition. Uh, soft point ammo obviously can be a little bit more hit or miss in certain guns, um, but still nonetheless, I wanted to let you guys know about that malfunction for a grand total of one malfunction, again, in 1,540 rounds. So, and I was talking to my friend about that as we were out there shooting, the guy who was running the camera and running some of the drills with this, and we were talking about how, you know, he was running his LMT gun out there. I had my PWS gun out there. And, you know, we were talking about how when we're running a really nice gun like that, if we run into a foible, it's really easy to say, oh, it's a magazine issue or it's an ammo issue or, you know, find blame other than the gun. However, for some reason, both him and I in our past with our biases, we had, if something like that would happen, we said, oh, PSA, piece of garbage. Uh, and we... We kind of find that confirmation bias of wanting to address faults to the easy scapegoat without actually really giving everything the same benefit of the doubt. But side note, take that for what it is. So how is this thing actually holding up internally? So yeah, we're over 1500 rounds in, but what does it actually look like? Does it look like it's still got life left or does it look like it's about to fail on us? And so what I did before starting the camera, I went ahead and disassembled the bolt, cleaned everything up just so I could get a good look at all the surfaces. And really we're looking at standard wear for this type of round count on an AR-15 from my experience. So one of the first places I wanted to look was on the back and front of the, uh, the locking lugs. And hopefully I'll be rolling in some close up pictures so you can actually see this for yourself, um, just to see if there's any rounding or deformation or anything like that from the bolt not being properly fit to the barrel extension or the barrel extension not being quite to spec. And again, we, we see a little bit of the shiny metal on the back of the locking lugs, which is pretty common. Again, that's where they're rubbing against each other as it's locking in and out um, of, of that barrel extension. 
um, but nothing, again, unusual, at least in my experience so far. We've got a little bit of shininess on where the bolt carrier is writing inside of the upper receiver. Again, nothing too crazy there. Uh, we do have a little bit of rubbing on the tail end of the bolt carrier, presumably where it's writing inside of the receiver extension or your buffer tube. Um, but again, nothing too crazy, and it's not causing any cycling issues or reliability issues. So uh, to me, that is not really a cause for concern, at least again, in my opinion, after this many rounds. Although again, not something I always see on every gun that I test. Um, now I did, again, take the bolt out, gas rings look fine, everything internal looks fine. The extractor still has plenty of tension on it with the um, with the setup that they have in there. Ejector still has plenty of tension on it, so this doesn't look like it's gonna fail anytime soon. And while we're talking about the bolt carrier, um, the staking on the gas key looks excellent. Um, a lot of companies, especially ones that you spend more money on, don't always get stuff like that right. I know everyone says, well, all the bolt carrier components come from the same place. Sure, that may be true, it's not, but it may be true, um, but not every company has the same level of quality control or the same level of attention to detail when they're actually assembling things. So at least in this case, this one is good to go. Again, this is the Palmetto State Armory Bolt Carrier Group that came with it, which is magnetic particle inspected. At least that's what it says on the, uh, the bolt itself. So take that for what it is. Uh, again, the upper receiver itself looks fine. The area where the cam pin rides into its little locking recess in the upper receiver, I'm not seeing any crazy wear there. The feed ramps and the, the barrel extension itself, although dirty, uh, do look fine as well. There's nothing crazy going on in the trigger group uh, or the fire control group. Uh, no crazy wallowing out of anything. The springs still have plenty of tension on them. Everything is set up good to go. No issues with pins walking or anything like that. Uh, really, everything is looking fine. Now, um, with that out of the way, I do want to mention something because you may have already noticed over my shoulder, there is another AR-15 over there. And because of my very positive experience after about the first thousand rounds with this thing, I decided to pick up one of the um, dissipator, there, there you go, one of the dissipator uppers from uh, Palmetto State Armory. So the 16 inch with the rifle length uh, front sight post, but a mid-length gas block underneath. Um, they were really, really affordable and I've always kind of dug that look. So I wanted to pick one of those up. And it that allowed me to kind of get a gauge more than a sample of one, let's say, of the build quality and quality control that Palmetto State Armory is doing. And I'm really glad that I did that because um, one thing I noticed when I took this thing apart, when I first got it in, um, there were no shims on the uh, barrel nuts. So uh, the, normally on like most modern free float handguards, timing of the barrel nut doesn't matter because the gas tube just goes over the barrel nut. However, on the GI style handguards and some other handguards out there, you have to make sure that it aligns properly with the gas tube so it can just go over. Now, with this one, again, there were no shims, but it didn't matter because at the proper torque spec, it lined up just fine. So no issues and proper torque is 40 to 80 foot pounds usually, sometimes 40 to 60, depends on the brand. So I noticed again, nothing there, but it was greased, so that was good to go. However, when I got the dissipator upper in, one of the things that I noticed, first of all, I noticed that the gas block on that was dimpled, because again, it's a low profile gas block underneath the handguard that was dimpled. That was a real surprise to me. I was really glad to see that. However, when I removed the barrel nut, that's where I noticed some potential issues in build quality and attention to detail. Again, there were no shims once I got the barrel nut off. However, the barrel nut to get off, uh, as and again, as someone who works at a gun store, I'm helping customers all the time, taking parts off, putting parts on. I have at least done 100 barrel nuts over my time putting together my own AR-15s, doing maintenance on my AR-15s, and especially helping customers with their AR-15s. That was the hardest barrel nut I have ever removed from any AR-15. I had to lock it in device, I had to use two wrenches and a cheater bar to finally get it to break loose, and again, I noticed no shims. And so what that tells me, at least based on the two samples I have here, is when they're doing the GI style handguards, they're not worried about shims, they'll just, they, they do put the grease and the anti-seize on the threads, however, they just torque that thing down until it lines up obviously hopefully getting the minimum torque and then just 
keeping applying torque until that tube lines up, which not a good thing. You should absolutely use shims. Yes, it takes more time, but it is 100% worth it because if someone who didn't have the same tools or setup that I have available to me at a gun store try to remove that, that thing ain't going nowhere or they're going to break it in the process, their upper receiver, their, you know, their barrel nut, their wrenches, whatever the situation is. So not super stoked about that, but on the counter side of that, it was like under $300 for a complete upper. So obviously when we're talking about saving money with Palmetto State Armory in general, there have to be some corners being cut. I don't know the qualifications of the people actually putting together their guns. I don't know if they've taken armors courses or whatever else. So I can't speak to what they know to do or don't know to do, but I can say that that was an experience I had here. Now, again, this is only a sample of two and Palmetto State Armory is probably one of the leading suppliers of AR-15s in the United States right now. So they are cranking these things out. So if you have one yourself, if it has had shims under the barrel nut, please let me know. Please put that in the comments below because I think that will be a relevant thing to, again, go more than just a sample of two here. And again, it wasn't an issue on this one because at its proper torque, it was perfectly lined up. So no, no, again, issues there. But I also don't want to give Palmetto State Armory a free pass. Again, I think it's something worth letting you know and at least something to look out for on your own PSA if you get one of these. So in summary, I think that this experience with Palmetto State Armory has really changed my perspective and my approach to Palmetto State Armory as a company. Um, I used to make a lot of jokes at Palmetto State Armory's expense, at least privately with my friends. Um, and I wasn't really something I would recommend to people. And that was just mostly based on my experience with Palmetto State Armory products, again, working at a gun store. And I think, again, one of the things that I realized when I decided to start this project was a lot of the issues I saw were not necessarily issues that were the fault of Palmetto State Armory. Because they sell so many kits, a lot of the issues I saw were actually the result of people who don't know what they're doing, putting their own guns together, and then causing issues there by installing parts backwards or incorrectly or in the wrong order or whatever else. So a lot of those issues were not Palmetto State Armory's fault, even though they were on Palmetto State Armory's guns. So that's why I decided to try this myself. And again, I have been very, very pleasantly surprised by how this thing has performed. Again, enough so that I purchased myself of my own money another upper from Palmetto State Armory. And pretty soon I plan on picking up one of their GF5 AKs just because the thing that I appreciate about a Palmetto State Armory and one of the reasons I was willing to, again, give them a shot with this test is they seem to be constantly actively improving their product lineup and making it something that gets better and better and fits more and more needs of the public while still keeping the prices exceptionally reasonable. So for example, if you want to get a Wasser 10 right now, a Romanian Wasser 10, which people say is the greatest AK in the world, even though 10 years ago it was a giant pile of trash, if you look at the current imports, they're using more cast parts. They're still not straight. They still have a lot of issues, at least as far as attention to detail and their build quality. People are happy to pay $1,000 for those, but you can get a really well put together with really good American-made component, Palmetto State Armory GF3, GF5, for the same price, if not cheaper, with more features, better features, I think. A concentric barrel, you're really not gonna run into the same issues. Uh, but again, at a very reasonable price, and they are doing a really, really good job in the AK world because they are constantly striving to improve, and they do, I can tell, genuinely care about the reputation in the industry and the quality of the products they put out. They, they really do have a passion for this, and I've gotten that from when I have talked to the employees of Palmetto State at things like SHOT Show. It's just something you really get when you actually talk to these guys, and so yeah, this is the cheapest one that I could possibly put together. I know they do have higher quality ones with higher quality FN barrels and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think even now, and as time continues to go on, Palmetto State Armory is really going to be going after this civilian market and trying to bring us the highest value products they can while still giving it or having it be something we can trust our lives to. And again, that if this is any indication of where things are going, I think they are absolutely on the right track and I think you can buy in confidence. Now, if you did have an issue, Palmetto State Armory does have a warranty and I know especially in COVID, uh, there were a lot of people complaining about wait times to get back, uh, to get responses back from the customer service and all that kind of stuff. And 
yeah, totally get that. That's not super cool. However, again, when we think about how prolific Palmetto State Armory ARs are out there, uh, they have a lot of people that are trying to get a hold of them and for what, one reason or another, and they're probably stretched pretty thin. So give them a little bit of patience and grace, grac graciousness, or I don't even know if that's the right word to use in this context, but uh, um, uh, give them a chance and I, I think you'll be really happy with it. Uh, and again, if my store is any representation, as, at least as far as lowers, we get at least a dozen a week from these guys. And this is just one small part of one state in the US. As far as complete guns, we get tons of AKs and complete ARs and complete lowers and stuff from these guys. So they are cranking out a bunch of stuff. I can only imagine what the numbers are world, or at least countrywide, probably not worldwide, although I think Ukraine could probably use some of these at the moment. But anyway, again, if you have experience with Palmetto State Armory, good or bad, please put it in the description below. If bad, let us know what your customer, uh, customer service experience was. If you didn't even try to attempt getting a hold of customer service, um, I, you know, what are you doing? Um, you can't blame them if you don't even give them a chance to fix it, at least in my opinion. Um, but again, if you have experience, please, please let me know. Again, while Palmetto State Armory did provide the kit around it, uh, again, the blemish kit valued around $350. All of the ammo put through this was paid for by me and my support over on Patreon. So if you want to be able to support this channel and support the continuation of the testing on this, please ch uh, follow the links down below because this is not the end of the story for this. I will continue to potentially do slight upgrades here or there. Um, but again, I think that as configured, uh, unless you're trying to do night vision stuff, um, this is all you really need. Um, but again, I want to say thanks to my patrons for helping to make this possible. That's why I post all my content over there early. We have some exclusive content. We do live streams. We have a Discord server, all that kind of stuff. And if any of that stuff sounds interesting, please follow the links down below again. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, throw them in the comment section down below. I may not respond to everything, but I do read every comment, so definitely throw that stuff down below. But as always, I hope you got something out of this video, and I really appreciate you watching.